What is the difference between distance and displacement? When do these two quantities have the same value, and when are they different? And how do you calculate distance and displacement for a back and forth motion? Well, I'm Mr. H, and I have some answers for you. For an object moving along the ground, the distance is the total amount of ground that is covered. Distance is a scalar quantity. Scalar quantities are fully described by magnitude or numerical value. Displacement is quite different. It's defined as the overall change in position of an object. It is a vector quantity that is fully described by both a magnitude or numerical value and a direction. Scalars like distance are direction ignorant, but vectors like displacement are always aware of direction. This animation of a man walking along the ground demonstrates the difference between distance and displacement. When the man is done, he's walked a distance of 16 meters, but he finishes 2 meters east of his starting place. We would say he's displaced 2 meters to the east. Whenever there's a change in direction, there's a difference in the numerical value for distance and displacement. To further illustrate the difference, consider this back and forth motion. Noah decides to grab a snack at Mickey D's. His friend Samir wants to come with. Noah drives 3.2 kilometers west to Samir's house. Samir hops in the car, then Noah drives 2.0 kilometers east to Mickey D's. What is Noah's distance and what is Noah's displacement? Distance is ignorant of direction. To determine the distance here, ignore all the directional information. Distance refers to the amount of ground that Noah drove over. Simply add the lengths of the two parts of this back and forth motion. Noah traveled a distance of 5.2 kilometers. Displacement is quite different. It is direction aware. It matters that the 3.2 kilometers was west and the 2.0 kilometers was east. To determine the displacement, consider one of these to be positive and the other to be negative. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Let's just say that positive is to the east and negative is to the west. In that case, the overall displacement is negative 3.2 kilometers plus positive 2.0 kilometers. This adds to negative 1.2 kilometers. That's the displacement. But wait, what does the negative mean? Ah, uh, we said negative means west. So the displacement is 1.2 kilometers to the west. Allow me to walk you through a more difficult example before I give you some tips for success. Noah gets an urge to go to Mickey D's for lunch. His friends, Kaylin and Waylon, want to go along. So Noah leaves his house and drives 1.4 kilometers east to pick up Kaylin. Then Noah drives 3.6 kilometers west to pick up Waylon. Finally, Noah drives 1.0 kilometers east to Mickey D's. What is Noah's distance? What is Noah's displacement? Distance is direction ignorant. So determining the distance means we add up all the individual distances. The total distance is 1.4 plus 3.6 plus 1.0 kilometers. Noah drove a total distance of 6.0 kilometers. That's the amount of ground that is covered. Displacement is the direction of wear quantity. It pays attention to the direction of each leg of this three-legged trip. I'm gonna begin by saying east is positive. That makes west negative. And then I'm going to use positive and negative as directional information when I add these three displacement vectors. The overall displacement is positive 1.4 kilometers plus negative 3.6 kilometers plus positive 1.0 kilometers. The result is negative. That means the displacement is directed west. The resulting displacement for this trip is 1.2 kilometers west. Calculating the distance and displacement for a back and forth trip involves applying the definitions of these two terms. Here's some tips for success. First, begin by sketching a diagram. Draw vector arrows in the appropriate direction and of the approximate length. Label each arrow with a numerical value. For distance, ignore all directional information. Just add up the numbers because distance is a scalar. For displacement, define the positive and the negative direction. Then add up the numbers with the positive and negative included as directional information. When you're done, translate the positive or negative result into an actual direction, like east or west. In the description section of this video, you will find some links to some awesome interactive exercises on our website. Putting this information to practice is one way to ensure that you got this. Hey, I'm Mr. H. Thanks for listening.